my dudes, welcome. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it may be by the, uh, by the time you're watching this. Alright, we're back in the saddle and ready to battle. Welcome to the voiceover show. I keep having dreams of uh, using the original audio from some of these recordings, but uh, Center City, Philadelphia was kind of in Mad Max mode last night. Just endless jackhammers, dirt bikes, helicopters. I don't know. That's just kind of the norm. Even right now, I probably should have the window closed, but I at least got the, the good microphone plugged in. But let's see. I'm going to ramble for uh, about 10 or, 10 or 11 minutes today. Didn't really have any... Um, big ideas about original drawings to make, so uh, as usual, I'm certainly not afraid of indulging in some fan art, letting illustrating be fun. There'll always be time to be um, sophisticated at a later date. We'll get around to it. But for today, uh, certainly been feeling the buzz of a new Zelda game coming out for the Switch, and uh, I'm a retro gamer, so I've certainly played my fair share of all the early titles, so I decided to draw an illustration that um, is completely lifted from the instruction booklet for the original game. It's going to feature Link here, which I'm just sketching now. He's kind of around the corner of a big rock, prepared to strike as this large caterpillar beast is discovering where he's been hiding. Looks like he's got the large shield. He's ready to go. And this was from the age when Link was a little bit, a little bit dumpier, a little more sprite-like. I was also excited to bust out the watercolors, which, uh, aside from using some brush pens, hadn't really filmed anything with watercolor yet. Laying in some blocked out plain water in the drawing. The hope was to keep some of my background colors from migrating too much. original picture that I'm referencing certainly had a very uh, yellow and ochre palette with a background that was uh, pretty loose like I'm trying to mimic here and then it's a bit tighter when the actual characters get inked in. I wonder if the new Tears of the Kingdom game coming out will uh, they should have some more throwback enemies, which they've already done a good job of in Breath of the Wild. But I'm trying to remember, was there any big ominous caterpillars in um, big centipedes in Breath of the Wild? I forget. I did have the chance to play it a couple months ago. I was glad to complete it. That game was a real treat. Although I feel like this weekend, kind of inspired by this drawing, I may have to jump into some some retro runs of the original. Maybe do the second quest.
certainly not a lot to say here. Um, technique wise, mostly just trying to emulate the original as best I can. Essentially, while I'm recording here, I have a little iPad in the background, <laughs> which I keep having to uh, refresh pretty constantly as I'm looking at the original illustration, which I suppose I probably could include at the beginning or end of this video, but I have a feeling I might not. If you're curious, uh, certainly it's all out there on the internet to enjoy pretty much all the original illustrations from the instruction booklet are pretty amazing. And at that time it was like really important for those to be good because you know with the 8-bit graphics uh, you felt pretty immersed in the environment but certainly there's um, a lack of detail. Your imagination is filling in quite a bit of gaps where the sprites can fail and the pixels can only show you so much. So when you found yourself poring over the instruction booklet with some of these types of illustrations, it really gave some fuel to your imagination to uh, somehow make those pixels feel even more rich when you're playing the game. Uh, looks like we're up to the exciting part of your racing. Characters are still looking a little wonky. And here's where the, um, the illustration does kind of change a little bit from my original intention. I'm not entirely sure why, but came to realize that I don't seem to have some of my smallest liner brushes. And this drawing is pretty small. So... Once I get to the end of uh, blocking in the centipede, I kind of abandon the watercolor and bring in some markers just to have a little bit more control. So in a lot of ways, uh, when I'm doing fan art, especially when I'm just paying honor to an existing illustration, it's not so much that I'm a uh, adhering to any particular art rules or maybe a traditional watercolor you know it might be pretty sinful to bring in markers or something but this certainly isn't the case and I kinda knew I was having some upcoming struggles with getting some of the shade tones in that millipede and those legs had to be crispy, and I knew my brush wasn't going to work there, so... Let's see when those markers come in soon. Pretty much right here. I think uh, one of the things we'll see towards the end, and I guess I'm kind of speaking ahead of the game here. The original, straight, original illustration didn't really have um, any cast shadows under both the enemy or Link, and somehow that just just didn't sit right with me, so you will see in like the brief final moments where I sneak in a little bit more groundwork just to make Link and the enemy seem a little more like, you know, literally grounded. here in the city and uh, in fact I'm gonna let the audio finish out today with uh, the original audio as Center City sounded last night a little bit of ASMR of pulling the tape off the watercolor let's see we're adding some final shadows Now 
We got jackhammers and helicopters that just missed some dirt bikes. You didn't think I was gonna uh, leave you out on the tape hauling part, did you? So, we had the drawing under weights for a little bit. Flatten it out. And here we go. Chances are we did get a little bit of bleed under, but we'll see. Maybe not. As we wrap things up, maybe also worth mentioning, uh, when I show you the final image here, panning across the screen, you'll notice that I did add a, uh, a plastic overlay, as well as using a hole punch to add some features that made it feel a little bit more like an animation cell. It gives it a little bit more of a, a completed feeling. Hopefully it would make it seem a lot more uh, crispy and presentable as an object of its own if I can get it into a frame soon. But on that note, thank you so much guys for tuning in for another episode of Ink and Relax. Hope you have a great weekend. Peace.